Okay, so you are probably thinking, what the f is this, right? And you're thinking, wow, well, how can I really create this? I clicked on this thumbnail and I really, really want to know how to create this figure right here. Well, you are in luck because I am here to show you how to do exactly that. There's a very easy way to do it and you're gonna have this on your screen in no time. Okay, so for the first thing is to create a landscape. Okay, now you zoom in on this landscape and you see that it's like this, it's go, it goes up and it's like a high landscape, okay? Now I will change these borders at sea level to disabled and as you can see now it looks like water a bit, but that's not what I want. Uh, I just want to drag it down to something like 20 centimeters and now this looks like a landscape that I want to use. Now the next thing is to create a redshift uh, area. Uh, area light okay now I will enable this and I will turn this around so you can see it works like this now I if I create a redshift environment you will see that if I change this parameter right here to something more pink and change this area light volume contribution scale to 0.4 you can see that this is starting to look like some kind of an environment okay now if I create uh, a redshift material and if I go inside of this double click this to open up this node editor now I will search for max on noise okay if I double click this noise and change this to Nucky okay and click Q which is a shortcut for this uh, solo node here I can see how this noise looks on the 3d view okay now I will click this again so that I don't see it and I will connect this to the color channel and now if I change this black one to let's say something like this something like a flesh color as you can see this is starting to look a little bit like flesh right yeah very good very good now the next part is to create the weird thing okay the thing okay now for that I will be using a plane I will drag this up I will change this to four four one one I will zoom in and as you can see there's a small little plane here I will make this editable by pressing C and I will choose this polygon mode I will select this I will drag this down okay now uh, it's under this uh, floor here now I will um, enable this point mode uh, point animation mode and create a keyframe here now I will go to frame 45 and search for matrix extrude okay now if I change the steps to 40 uh, this one to something of 1.3 this one to 0 and this one to 95 let's copy this and paste it in other fields too now as you can see it has grown okay now if I press record again here and now if I go to frame 0 disable this so it's faster and play the animation you can see that it animates really good right really good okay so now if I want to make this uh, look uh, better I will select my plane I will search for subdivision surface uh, hold down alt and press enter and now this has been subdivided right now I will search for bulge deformer hold down shift and make this a child of this plane now if I increase the strength as you can see some bulging is going on right and if I decrease this one this parameter here uh, it becomes smaller and now I can drag it up uh, I think I need to increase it a bit more drag it down a bit more and it's done very good right now what you can do to make this animation look uh, a bit better is to create another thing another thing right and this is called jiggle deformer jiggle deformer now this jiggle deformer goes below this bulge deformer I think okay I'll stop doing this Russian accent and now as you can see it it bounces a little bit when it animates okay and I think it has become uh, it has um, flu uh, flu uh, no it has just kind of um, went over this floor here and why is that why is it going on over the floor what is going on here man I don't know maybe the jiggle the former is um, like up the animation yeah okay I'm sorry I'm sorry there's there's gonna need to be a censorship uh, beep okay now this has been uh, yeah 
This is the way to create this object here. And now if I create a material, double click this and add this to the subdivision surface, right, right, right. Uh, you can go in this material and let's just say you increase the scatter scale. Actually, no, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna duplicate this material and I'm gonna drag it on here and I'm gonna give a subdivision surface uh, light scattering to this object so that this is the one that's kind of breaking the light up, right? 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 Yeah, it is. Now, uh, I will change the color of this to something like this. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna create an area light here. I'm gonna turn, rotate it around. I'm gonna change the size of this bitch uh, again. And now I'm gonna put it behind this object so that you can see exactly what is like you can see that the light is kind of shining through it, okay? Now, what's interesting about this is that you can... Uh, let me disable this Jiggle Deformer for now, and let me duplicate this, okay? And if you duplicate it, it's the same geometry here, but I want to make a smaller version of this that fits inside of the bigger version of this, okay? I'm gonna change this to Plane Deformer. No, I'm gonna create a Plane Deformer. And I'm gonna drag this down below this plane, okay? And now I'm gonna choose the point and I'm gonna disable this to zero and drag this down. And now if I press N and G, you will see that, uh, you will see the lines. And now if you drag this down, you can see that it becomes smaller, smaller, right? And as you can see over here, it looks like there's something inside of this object. And for organic things, that's usually the case. Uh, life is basically things that are inside other things, right? Yeah, I'm right. Okay, so now you can even create a standard redshift camera, enable this so that you can see through the camera. Now change this focal length to 70 uh, and enable this, this setting here, change this to focus distance. And I think you can take this bulge object and you can put this as the focusing point of this camera. And as you can see, the camera is kind of focusing on this one. So now if you zoom back and forth, you can see that the depth of field changes and it really gives you the feeling that this is a microscopic world. Now I can even take this uh, landscape object, I can zoom back out, I can uh, cop copy and drag this, and I think I can change the height of this and drag this down, change this setting right here, and drag it even further up. As you can see, this really creates this feeling that there's something going on in the background of this, and this is not just a simple, like a, like a plane, that there's some, some real, real stuff going back on back in the background so that you feel like, wow, whoa, 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 whoa. So now one final thing for this animation, what I'm gonna do is what I forgot to do earlier, is to create a displacement. And I will use this same no noise for this. And I will copy this. I will change this color one to black because displacement uh, maps need to be black. And I will search for displacement. I will double click this. I will drag this, connect here, texture map, displacer. And now one thing you need to know about Redshift is that all the objects that have to, that will have displacement, they need to have this Redshift object tag. And if you click enter here, and change the tab to geometry uh, and override enabled, you can see that there's some displacement going on, right? This is too much. Of course, this is too much. Now I will drag this down so that it's not too much. And now this looks better, right? Now I will do the same thing for this one. I will duplicate this noise. I will change this to black. I will search for displacement. Uh, displacement I will double click this I will connect this to this and texture map now outside and now I will drag this holding down control to the subdivision surface here now if I refresh the animation and even if I zoom in as you can see the displacement is a bit too big right and that's because if you click on the solo node here you can see that the displacement is like it's too big basically now I will change this to point one or even to point uh, yeah point one is okay now if you double uh, if you refresh the window you can see that now it's uh, a little smaller right 
And now if you refresh this window again, you can see that it's too much, right? It's again too much. So now I will change this to 132, okay? Now what's going on here? Yeah, now there's some displacement going on and you can see and you can be sure that, uh, yeah, displacement is working. Okay, so thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something. If you didn't, you know, try to teach me something maybe. Maybe you know more about this stuff than I do. I will, especially if you have something uh, bad to say about this or something you didn't like, please, please write in the comments. And of course, if you spend some more time on this, you can create some uh, good, better looking results, right? You can even add some particles in the air, as you can see here. You can create some camera movement. You can tinker with the settings of the scatter, scatter material, subsurface scattered material. You can add some hair, of course. You can add long hair, short hair whatever right if you have any questions about about this a specific these specific details write them in the comments and i will address them or even make another tutorial on how to do this i really hope you learned something and please do not hesitate to subscribe and uh, click the like button okay thank you very much and you know see you on the next video